And so the real the real benefit I see to our members is that um, we can anonymize the um, the questions and look at the issues uh, from a, a more general basis. Before we get started with the show, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Global Training Center. As trade compliance professionals, you want to make sure that your procedures and documentation are completed as correctly as possible to avoid any delays and possible fines. We provide a range of trade compliance courses that will fit your needs. From in-person or web training to recorded on-demand courses, we can train one or even thousands on your team through your learning platform or on our portal. We can even customize a private session for your team. Go to globaltrainingcenter.com to find out more. Hey folks, we're on for our Simply Trade podcast. We are so thankful for your listenership. We are growing as a show. We are growing because you listen to us, because you are sharing us, you're liking us and all that. If you haven't already done so and you are listening to the show, please hit that subscribe or follow button to because we really uh, appreciate that. But with that, we are talking about some things today on uh, going to a, a particular conference. It's a little bit different for us. Uh, Lalo uh, has, uh, I, I'm just amazed on how our, our listenership base is growing, but this is going to be a cool topic today because we're going to hit into a, in the automotive industry side of things uh, uh, today, are we? Yeah. So, so um, primarily um, we, or, or let, let's go back a little bit uh, ways back. Uh, we have our friends over at MIC customs that we pretty much run into all the time at a bunch of different conferences. And um, so they got to, I guess check out the different things that we've done in the past. And they, they, they were very gracious in inviting and sponsoring us to come to a, a all new different event that we've never been to. It's more of a one day uh, event. It's called the town hall. And um, guess what? Andy's going to be a guest speaker there. He's going to be a keynote speaker. <laughs> so he'll, he'll be talking about that. The interesting thing though, is that it's two days after the election. So who knows what the heck we're going to talk about down there, down there? I I, I got to say we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second because I I'll, I'll give a teaser on uh, what I'm going to be uh, talking about. But so Miriam Cronk, you are the lead of the AIAG group. So why don't you talk a little bit about that and then introduce uh, the two folks that uh, are supporting you here. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me uh, here today. Uh, my name is Miriam Kronk, and I work at AIG, Automotive Industry Action Group. I've been here about 11 years, and my area, whereas um, I manage the customs and trade area global and oversee our customs and trade town hall, as mentioned, that will be held here in the Metro Detroit area, November 7th in person. And we are a not-for-profit company. We are the largest trade association for the automotive industry, appropriately where we're located. We have about uh, more than uh, approximately 5,000 members, make up of OEMs and tiers, and members and non-members. And we've been around, uh, I would say, about 40, 41 years. So um, we've been growing, continue to expand, and I'm really excited about uh, our town hall coming up. We have a great agenda, great speakers, including yourselves. And that's about, you know, I look forward to definitely meeting and making new friends. I have uh, with me who are part of my planning committee, um, good friends offline, great subject matter experts. I'd like to introduce Miquela Dorsch and then as well, Mark Herzl. And uh, they'll talk a little bit more to uh, the agenda that we have here, some topics that uh, recently we had a call to action uh, within the automotive industry, uh, making up of uh, several OEMs and tiers. So some pain points were definitely brought up that they would like to be addressed and something that we were very conscientious about uh, applying that to our agenda. So our audience would Excellent. be quite pleased. All right. So the conference itself, the town hall is going to be in November. Is that correct? Correct. The 7th in person. 
And that will be held, as mentioned, in the Metro Detroit area, Livonia, at uh, Laurel Manor. So that's for the full day, as mentioned. We'll start early in the morning, about 7.30, wrapping it up uh, early evening. Yeah, so um, I actually come to the automotive industry from a background as a customs house broker, freight forwarder for 33 years. So what I thought was really interesting about this is in the automotive industry, we don't necessarily um, uh, have very uh, intimate relationships, if you will, with customs and talking about uh, what's going on. In a customs broker's office, you're able to be uh, much more um anonymous about your clients. Hey, I have a client that thinks this or is worried about this. Um, in When you're working for an importer, um, and, and specifically an importer that's recognized, it's more challenging to have these sort of hypothetical or theoretical questions with customs about how things get done. And so the real the real benefit I see to our members is that um, we can anonymize the um, the questions and and allow us all together as an industry to sort of look at these um, questions and look at the issues uh, from a, a more general basis without it being attributed back to individual manufacturers or or suppliers and things like that. So that's 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 the single biggest benefit. And, and you get to talk to people in your industry who are dealing with. Um, the same kinds of issues. Uh, networking is so paramount. And with that, it's, you know what, when you attend a conference, you're dealing dealing with your day in and day out job and you go through it. And when you attend a conference like that, you find out, you know what, you're not by yourself. Others are experiencing some of the same things. And you can compare notes to say, well, how did you deal with it? Or how are you dealing with it? Or, you know what, you know, you can tag team some things. I need a, somebody I can talk to that understands the issue and doesn't give me the deer in the headlight look to where, okay, we're going through this. What do you think the options are and, and all that? So it sounds like this is uh, going to be a great time. Michaela, what about from your perspective in the uh, town hall here? Yeah, so similar to what Mark was saying, um, my background is heavily on supply chain first and then leading into um, 12 plus year within a customs brokerage leadership type position. But I'm um, leading not from the individual filing perspective, but actually leading the team to make sure things get filed on time to make sure it gets delivered to final destination. And then these kind of sessions really allow the different organizations like an OEM and a supplier and a freight forward to get together and then brainstorm how to improve activities where they're seeing issues and actually discuss the, the individual topics of concern directly with leadership from customs and other organizations who don't necessarily hear those concerns directly from what we jokingly say the horse's mouth, right? So um, sometimes those folks are somewhat removed from the actual folks who they're affecting when they're making policy changes. So by having this kind of a conference and having, I'm going to say, being able to reach out and touch those folks directly is probably the best opportunity that sometimes a customs director, such as um, Director D'Amato or a C organization person will have. So it's a great way of bringing those people together and having a, an opportunity to discuss those topics. And in addition, then you also have the cross dialogue going between a supplier and who has similar issues and concerns and an OAM with similar issues and concerns that otherwise sometimes you don't have an opportunity to build those networks. Great. And, and I did notice on the agenda, you, you do have a lot of heavy presence from the government officials, like you just uh, named uh, Director Amato. And then just for everybody who is not um, aware of, uh, the, the, there is now a new, or finally, let me just say that, a uh, director for CTPAT here um, for, at CBP, and that would be Dina Amato. Um, and so she'll be there. I did see that. Um, I saw, I mean, quite a few people there. Um, you're going to have Brian Hoxie who, who runs, uh, over at the, um, at the, uh, force labor, he's director of force labor division. We've had him on the show as, as well. Um, but it's, it's really interesting how, how, um, you will have quite a few, uh, speakers on the agenda. Um, besides of course, 
Andy <laughs> and and uh, and Pete Mento, who who are not necessarily um, government officials, but you know from the, the they are from the industry. Uh, but I also see like Cindy Allen is going to be there, et cetera. So you know, you, you, it looks like you have have a very complete and uh, and great slate there of, uh, of speakers. We have, we have some uh, really uh, uh, influential friends in uh, good places who are, are willing to share their knowledge with all of us um, who are, are down in the trenches. I think the challenge sometimes being in the industry itself is having this big picture view of what's going on in the outside world around us. And that is really one of the big purposes of this town hall event is to be able to bring us in the industry all together and let us hear from uh, those people who have a, um, a clearer view of what's going on in the world around us, understand, you know, like Cindy, um, what's going on with the uh, uh, 21st century uh, framework and like uh, Dave Korn and the drawback group, uh, what's what the changes are in drawback, what's going on with export um you know, automation uh, so that you can link those two things together. Um, you know, CT Pat, there's certainly, uh, you know, changes uh, likely to occur with a new director. And, and then, uh, you know, forced labor is uh, not going away. That's a, that's an issue that's hot and heavy that uh, is challenging for, for many of us. And then, you know, the 301 um, issues um, with uh with you know how are we going to deal with anti anti dumping and some of the very complex anti dumping issues that are happening today? So all those things together, it makes it makes it uh, for a tough job uh, for those of us who are the practitioners in the trenches. So, well, and to that point, I will say that um, you know as we're looking through uh, uh, from my perspective. Uh, I will say Cindy, I have a lot of respect for Cindy Allen. Uh, she and I are, are good friends and, and have um, gotten to work together on some uh, things when she was at customs. I was at FedEx at the time, uh, re-engineering the entry process and with the entry simplification uh, task force. That said is that then, you know, several other things that we've gone through and, uh, you know, the, Cindy is uh, – really up to speed as well as on the de minimis issue. That's a big issue. It's uh, a little bit sensitive to certain things. Well, it's sensitive only because certain people are allowing what I would call some nefarious folks to utilize that program and get away with it. And customs, unfortunately, has been paying a price. And they're like, you know what? As a, I think the de minimis is great. It's a great program. Um, we don't want entries to clog the system of these low dollar items, but at the same time, uh, be able to deal with that effectively and what's the right way, you know, to do this. And so in talking about it, the automotive industry in particular should really be looking at uh, some of this and hopefully supportive of uh, some of the things we need to do to get a handle on that. Well, to that extent, one of the things that I'm going to be touching on is, uh, well, first off, Miriam, I, I got a question for you. Um, when people are registering here and all that, and they come into the, the, uh, the room there for, I guess it's at lunchtime is when my part is right. So it's, uh, you know, it's like, um, are we going to make sure that anybody that, uh, you know, there, there are no tomatoes that are going to be left on the table or whatever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's <Free>. like <laughs> only rotten yeah. cabbages. Oh, I was gonna say, there we go. There we go. <laughs> no tomatoes, no stains, right? Yeah. Andy. We're going to love this. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's going to have a lot of fun here. So, but yeah, no, Andy, uh, I think it's interesting what you talked about you. the, the, um, the, uh, uh, de minimis, you know, it's interesting in the automotive industry, we're really not likely to see people ordering, you know, automobiles online and have them delivered to their house by FedEx, right? So, but what, what we do see is we do see this really uh, ominous issue distracting CBP from us legacy importers on the issues that are our, our issues today, right? So they're focused on something else and rightly so some of this uh, high risk de minimis stuff and not really able to put horsepower on 
on some of our automotive issues. So, um, you know, it is, it is an important issue, whether you're receiving it as a customer or, um, you're not receiving necessarily the attention because of, uh, the focus on de minimis from CBP. Well, and I will say though, in the automotive industry in particular, it's the, um, you know, parts distribution and things of that nature that comes into play that is, is paramount. And that's where I see a lot of, you know, just in the overall, there's a lot of, you know, low dollar shipments that need to get to somewhere. That's where that comes into play. And, and, you know, I, any of us will look at it and say, you know, if your car's in the shop, and, you know, it's like, oh, it's going to take, you know, two weeks to get the part. It's like, well, no, wait a minute. There are fly by night companies here, UPS, FedEx, uh, DHL, all that. They can get it here overnight. What's the deal? Um, and I can understand some of that stuff where it's manufactured offshore, but it still can get in as, as far as cycle times. Saying that there's also an issue here, whereas we're talking through these things, you got the 232 tariffs, the, 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 the aluminum and steel, uh, situation. And that has really hit the automotive industry along with the China tariffs, as we just mentioned, you mentioned that the 301s and, and all that. Well, and dealing with all that. Okay. So here's one of the things that I'm just going to give a little teaser on my piece of it. I've been sitting here trying to figure out, I was like, well, two days after the election, who the Sam Hill wants to hear from a dumb country boy that's going to get up and bloviate on something here. Right. So I'm trying to come up with something that's going to be of interest. And so regardless of whoever is elected, I'm hoping to try and put something together to say, let's talk about the top, you know, 25 economies in the world and, and narrow it down to probably maybe even the top 10 that are doing business with the U.S. And we hear about the trade deficit and things of that nature. So if we're going to talk about trying to affect the and and I know the automotive industry would love to see those 232 aluminum steel tariffs pulled uh, or, you know, some relief on that and, and whatnot. And I, I have to tend to agree to a point on the same token. It's like when you put it in the overall, it's that rather than just focusing on just one commodity that's getting hit with these, let's look at it holistically and, and talk about it. So I'm hoping to stimulate some, thought on how to deal with this from a holistic trade perspective with some of these countries. So with that, I hopefully will give some sufficient information that I've looked at. I've, I've used a few folks for soundboard and they're going, yeah, actually that's a whole different way of looking at it. So I'm going to be like that cross-eyed javelin thrower. I may not keep the crowd. Uh, I mean, excuse me. I may not set any records, but I'm going to keep the crowd awake. So it's one of those, like, hopefully I can, Give you something to look about, laugh about, and and hopefully something will come out of this to say, don't just look at one little item. Look at it holistically to say, if we can get relief on certain things from countries and, let's say, opening up markets for U.S. goods, then maybe we can get relief then on the 232s. Totally right, Andy. I think the concern that um, American exporters have, especially automotive exporters, has been the the reliability of our international supply chain has been our competitive advantage. Um, we can count on getting stuff to our customers on a regular basis when they want it, where they want it, et cetera. But with the disruptions that have you know recently happened in international shipping, and certainly some of those are being addressed, uh, we've kind of lost some of that edge that uh, that that helped compensate for our prices being a little higher than the average, um, you know. So yeah, I, I I totally agree. Yeah. Well, I will say also there are a lot of automotive companies that also are operating uh, FTZs or foreign trade zones. And there are certain things, you know, and they're Af I'm saying FTZs in the U.S. based, and you know, there are certain things that need to happen from a regulatory perspective to allow them to take advantage of the de minimis program and uh, all of this. So it's all said and done, I think there's some operation, but we got to look at it holistically again, and especially for U.S. exports. And I know there's a big deal on export. Um, controls. Uh, there's, there's new, I guess, if you will, there, uh, the, the government is upping its, um, uh, uh, review of export shipments and, and the requirements of, uh, export requirement compliance and, and things. But well, along those lines, 
We also don't want to be so bureaucratic. We need to look at it and say, we want exports because here's the other thing is that more exports are going to generate jobs and that in turn is going to, you know, help our own economy. So I, I, I see it where we need to look at it, not just from the U.S., but what are we doing in, in these other countries as we go out there? I mean, um, I think your topic will link nicely into the discussion that um, the general consuls from Canada and Mexico, respectively, are planning on having. Clearly, they are also, like you, not going to head on talk about um, who was elected, but specifically, more specifically, talk about what the impact of whatever the result may be, may have on both the trade uh, between Canada and the U.S. and Mexico and the U.S., potentially because of USMCA and then the future of those that trade agreement and how we will continue trading with those countries. And obviously also the general consul from Canada will talk about the Gordie Howe Bridge and what that future will hold for us and how we can move product back and forth between those two countries. Those things is stimulating trade for both countries and all three countries in this case with, you know, uh, Mexico and, and Canada. As we're going through with that, it's, it's what do we need to do from a regulatory affairs perspective? What do we need to do from a, an economic, uh, uh, stimulus perspective? And I'm talking from a GDP and in, in the U.S., but in, you know, taking advantage of USMCA. And, and with that, there are some issues that, quite frankly, um, you know, China is a, a big player. They are a big supplier in the automotive industry. I get that. They're a big, you know, consumer as well. However, there's also the scenario where USMCA upped the requirements for North American goods. Well, doggone it. Well, let's, let's quit fighting with each other and figure out how can we actually leverage our, um, trading uh, partnership but with Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. to make ourselves even more competitive from a North American perspective as we deal with competitors from Europe and, and Asia and all that. AIAG has been around for a while. You've got quite a few. you got several thousand members you mentioned there, Mary, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, and growing. Yes. All right. So is it predominantly just – the, the, the Michigan area or is we're talking, you know, across the country or in Canada and Mexico or around or what? Well, we do have offices uh, in Mexico and as well as in China, but primarily our headquarters is here, uh, notice, noticeably, of course, in the Metro Detroit area. And, uh, and we're definitely stepping as well into the aerospace area, but uh, dominantly more so the automotive. So, yeah, Andy, it's it's kind of interesting because AIAG, although they focus, we're focusing today on the customs part of it. They also do a lot of other educational um, uh, things for the automotive industry, uh, technological engineering assembly, you know that kind of stuff. So uh, AIAG is much bigger, um, and it's really focused on education within the industry, and that's kind of how we look at this whole. Uh, Customs Town Hall event is a way for us to bring together people who are uh, practitioners uh, to to increase their visibility and their education on the on all the issues. All right, to that point. All right, so let me ask this question: In attending this conference in November, what would you suggest would be maybe a, a you know maybe the top three? actions somebody should take away with from from what your agenda is well i i always tell people when they come to something like this like you mentioned before the networking opportunities bring business cards i mean so you can remember who you talk to because you're i guarantee you're going to meet somebody that you want to talk to later in more detail about some of the issues that that we're going to be discussing um and uh you know the uh, the other part is um just you know, keep your ears open because whenever customs is talking, um, you need to listen because they know, you know, they're telling you what they're looking for, right? And you've got to once you know what they're looking for, then you can focus on making sure you have your house in that particular area in order. So I think those are those are the the two big things in in my view. Michaela, do you have any thoughts or? 
Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I know nowadays people might not get business cards anymore. I, we're, I think, technologically moving away from those, but something to do like the, your phone bump against each other or something and make sure your business card is ready to be uploaded for sure. Right. But the next one to Mark's point is, um, collect as many contacts as you can and then, uh, and hear what the future is that customs is talking about that where they're going next. Because if you're not ready to, to hear what they're saying to you and you're not preparing to move towards that, then you most likely will miss the boat to be compliant. And one example would be if um, Director D'Amato, who is the new CTPAD director, as you already mentioned, is going to say that they're moving next into or, or heavier focusing on compliance in SEAL security, for example, or even heavier stepping up a requirement in wooden packaging, which is a major area they were focusing on. And you don't make sure the supply base or your shippers or yourself are compliant there. You can guarantee yourself lots of customs fines, as an example, right? Or if um, um, Serena uh, Baker Hill is going to talk about new areas that they see is going to work on and offer support, then I highly recommend that whoever is at that conference takes them up on that offer. Because any help that, that uh, customs offers to you, take it. And then work with them in advance, even if they say a pilot program comes up. Because if you can help influence in a positive way on what future work is being done in industry activities, that is the best opportunity for your voice to be heard. Doesn't mean they're going to listen to everything because customs still has the obligation to meet regulatory requirements for them. But at least they will hear what we're saying to try to make things easier for us, right? Hundred percent. I, I totally agree. It's it's about knowing where the puck is going to be, right? Um, you got to look down the ice and see where it's going to be, and they're they're telling us clearly where they're going. And it takes us a while to catch up to them sometimes, right? Because uh, you know the 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 industries we represent are, are behemoth industries with uh, lots of history and and lots of baggage that it takes to move in that direction. So. And one more thing to add to that, um, sometimes since we're the ones hearing it and we do have the behemoth behind us often, this is the best and first time we hear it. And then we have to start bringing the bell loud and clear back to our organization saying, here's the new thing coming. Get ready. We need IT support <laughs> to make those system changes, right? And if we don't ring that bell soon, we might be late to the party when customs does implement those changes. And then if we don't comply already and it goes into effect, the fines might be coming in penalties, right? Well, and Michaela, that's that's kind of where I was going is that is taking this information. And folks, if you're going to be attending this, you attend any conference, you need to be doing this. But in particular here is, you you know, take your notes, whatever. You need to put together some kind of communique that uh, goes back in within your own staff, your own management team, and your upper echelon for several reasons say, you know, here's the, the topics that we were just, uh, discussed, the key, the takeaways from it. Here's the action for us, or here's the risk for us, but be able to communicate that so that here's another thing about it. How often do people go and they're trying to justify, well, I need to go to this conference or that conference and, you know, spend the travel and uh, expenses and all that. And you come back and you don't ever communicate anything. It's like, well, did it really benefit anything? So you're going to need to communicate to say, I learned something from it. Here's the, the recap and the action you need to take. You know, like I said before, AIAG is focused on education and uh, and doesn't really get into advocacy. But uh, certainly we have uh, strong relationships with other uh, groups like Auto Drives America that, that are much more uh, active in that area. And and that that's actually to, to that point is that that's what I'm saying is that if there's something that comes through and you identify that you know what we need to get involved with that, so you know you're you're educated you're being uh, brought up to speed if you will or more proficient on a topic because of what AIAG is promoting, but you better come out with some actions to say you know what you know that's above my pay grade well maybe but you better inform them what's going on so that they can get involved. Miriam, you look like you're going to say something. No, agreeing with everything that's being stated, you know, um, it it really is a, a great opportunity for for anyone out there in the automotive. You know, our doors are open and um, 
having listened, as I had mentioned recently, having had these call to actions, you know, we are hitting upon each pain point that had been brought up. And we're ever so grateful, you know, just that networking with our relationships with CVP and, and uh, other from the industry. I, I really think a lot of people are going to walk away educated, as uh, Mark keeps repeating, um, and ever so definitely new friendships, new relationships. So, Oh, I, I, I get it. I just had a thought is that uh, one of the things that may be a, a cool thing is that instead of the tomato ideas, like, uh, you know, usually somebody is uh, in, that's an exhibitor has a lot of stress balls. So I mean, it's like, OK, guys, here's your shot. Take your stress balls and throw them. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring and, squirt guns and hand them no, out. There you go. Just there bring you an go. extra shirt. Just bring an extra well, shirt. So you have something to change. I, I can tell it, you, so. Cindy you Allen would be one of the first ones to take a shot. <laughs> 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 we have a love hate relationship. It's fantastic. It's like, I absolutely love that one. But she and I will go toe to toe with it. Next, I'm going to suggest a water tank, and you use, you know, how you have to the dump fall. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sit up there. It's like, come on, bring it on. There, there we go. <laughs> So, hey, yeah. folks, AIAG, November 7th, and you said, is it Leona? Laurel Manor in the city of Livonia, Michigan. Livonia, okay. Yep. Metro well, Detroit I, area. I had it close, but not quite. All right. So you with that, uh, AIAG.org, is that the uh, website? ORG, that's correct. Okay. And uh, this is the North American Customs and Trade Town Hall. So registration is open. Uh, we have some great exhibitors. Thanks to our exhibitors and sponsors. In particular, I've got to say that MIC uh, is, they are sponsoring for uh, myself and Lila to come up and, and we are looking forward to this. I really am. Look, there's a lot of folks that I do know in the industry, but I'm also looking forward to uh, meeting some new folks up there and, and it's going to be a new experience for, for me. And uh, hopefully this will work out that y'all will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll defer to your judgment after the, uh, the speech and, and, whatnot and hopefully we'll see what happens so uh mark michaela miriam thank you so much for today's uh show and and uh y- y'all have been great i'm looking forward to this it's uh it, it's going to be a great time i will say just kind of there's a reservation here i'm thinking okay michigan in november mm, boy <laughs> It, it couldn't be in Miami or it couldn't be. Hey, and I'm yeah, coming right. from Los Angeles. So yes. oh I got gosh. you. I, there's, there's someone worse off than you, brother. Someone yeah. worse off than you. That's me. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, you coming from the south or from the uh, like, Southern Cali, the it's like the blood is thin. You know, it's like, yep. gotta, you know, we'll see. It, it can be unpredictable, but uh, more cold than snow. Not yeah. like our friends over in the East Coast. Yeah. Well, I do know this. One of the key factors in the difference in the wintertime of in the south versus the north is to wear a scarf. It makes all the difference in the world. So, you know. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the show. For our listeners, again, we'll have contact information on our show notes. We also are looking forward to uh, seeing you. If you are uh, attending this, uh, please, please, please come up, say hi, introduce yourselves. Be glad to take a picture with you and all that. Uh, hit that subscribe button or follow button. Share this. Talk about it. Whatever. Give us some feedback. And with that... We're going to let you have a great day. Thank you for Simply Trade Podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. Simply Trade is brought to you by the generous contributions of Global Training Center. You can follow the show and GTC on LinkedIn or Twitter and other social networks. Make sure you check out the show notes in the description for a full rundown of today's show with all the important links. Also, make sure that you share this with a friend and subscribe on your favorite streaming platform. We really like hearing from you. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to rate and review wherever you listen to this podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest in the show or would like to sponsor Simply Trade or suggest any topic you would like for us to discuss, please contact us via email at simplytrade at globaltrainingcenter.com or you can DM us on Twitter at simplytradepod. Thank you again for the privilege of your time. Happy trading. Simply Trade is not a law firm or an advisor. The topics and discussions conducted by Simply Trade hosts and guests should not be considered and is not intended to substitute legal advice. 
You should seek appropriate counsel for your own situation. These conversations and information are directed towards listeners in the United States for informational, educational, entertainment purposes only and should not be substituted for legal advice. No listener or viewer of this podcast should act or refrain from acting on the basis of information on this podcast without first seeking legal advice from counsel. Information on this podcast may not be up to date depending on the time of publishing and the time of viewership. The content of this posting is provided as is. No representations are made that the content is error free. The views expressed in or through this podcast are those of the individual speakers, not those of their respective employers or Global Training Center as a whole. All liability with respect to actions taken or not taken based on the contents of this podcast are hereby expressly disclaimed.